Right, well, Fran, thank you for joining us. I know it's a busy time with the, the players returning to training. They're back in now. They've had a bit of fitness testing. And how are they looking? Yeah, um, so they came back in and went through their fitness test last week. Um, and we've actually, um, you know, been pretty pleased, really. Um, we sort of find a good time to, to compare them to is, is last November. Um, because often through the cycle of the season, you know, um, all the hard work they do over the winter, which leads them into the, the building up to the bowling pre-March, then into a season where we look to maintain. And so where we hope to be then the coming November is, if not the same in their parameters, to have improved. And across the board generally we've seen that, which we've actually been really pleased with, because that's something, as a science and medicine department, we've tried to, um, you know, start to achieve really. Mm. Obviously they're not into the nets yet, they're not picking up bats and balls just yet, but what will they be doing in the, in the build up to that? before they switch to cricket in the new year? Yeah, so this block here um, is really their key time where um, they're in the gym and they get to do um, basically just a, a mixture of, of things in their programme. So they'll be doing strength training, weight training that's related to um, their sort of um, particular profile as an athlete. Um, so the type of weights they will do will, will match that from what we discover in the fitness testing. Um, they'll also, we start to introduce impact, so, so plyometrics and the, um, you know, the ability of them to, to respond well to ground uh, impact. Um, they'll also do, be doing sort of aerobic fitness, their running drills and sprints, and just really using this, this key block before Christmas um, to just make all the, the sort of changes and adaptations they can there. Because then as we go to after Christmas, cricket comes in and they continue with, with um, the sort of S&C and physio prep work. Um, but it just starts to taper off a bit and, and you know match the cricket. Yeah, and of course in twenty twenty one we had, I think I'll pretty kindly say a few injuries. Um, has the program for this winter been altered at all to, to kind of reflect that? Yeah, I, I don't think in a massive sense. So the the key. Um, components that they will all do across the squad um, will stay fairly similar. However, as we often do, or, or we will always tend to do, um, as we sort of do our injury review and surveillance, for specific individuals, um, they will have tailored aspects of their programme, um, which will be specific to them looking at their sort of history, sometimes their injury history before they came to us. Um, and yeah, absolutely, taking into account um, the previous sort of six months, 12 months, and really the past 18, 20 months, and how everyone's training has been affected, um, sort of injury or not, um, and just trying to roll with that um, and help them, you know, be as prepared as possible. We've mentioned 2021 a lot. It was a testing time, particularly for, for you and your department. Well, I think during that time, naturally, when there's a lot of injuries, questions start getting asked by supporters, by people outside, you know, why are there so many injuries, what's happening? Just from your side of things, what is that pressure like, not only when there's so many injuries, but with such a condensed schedule, just to get players out there on the park? Yeah, I think um, it's, it is a very real pressure, and I think mm. it's a pressure that, um, you know, as a, particularly, specifically as a physio clinician, you know, um, I think you anticipate when you go and work in professional sport that you know there's going to be that kind of pressure, but until you sort of experience it and come through it, um, yeah, it's it, the, the way to deal with it is a lot of the time, again, like I've sort of said already in, in medicine, sports, sports medicine, um, you can't always deal in absolutes. From the moment an injury happens, the individual themselves wants to know which game am I back at, back, you know, going to be back playing in, um, and you can give them sort of a, a good idea really. Um, and so I think it's just one of the key things and it's what you know the physios are paid to do is use your sort of clinical experience and knowledge and you have to try and give that player first and foremost the best uh, available sort of information you can to say it's likely that we'll be back at this point um, and equally you then have to make sure that as you go through their rehab with them you're always reassessing pushing those goalposts back if they need to be, sometimes they can be brought forward and, and there's a lot of different factors that play into you know, when a player is, is going to be ready. So yeah, it's, it is a lot of pressure, um, but again, that's the kind of decisions that you anticipate and expect you're going to get when you're working in professional sport. I suppose it's difficult as well because you, you have the major injuries where players definitely can't play. But then you also have the more minor ones where a player maybe isn't quite ready from, from your opinion and maybe a coach's opinion as well but they want to be back out there, they want to be a part of the game. So how do you manage that side of things? 
There's, yeah, there's definitely a lot of nuances there and I think as well as much as, um, and particularly like we've said last year, I think everybody was aware of all the injuries we had and, and could see at various points when we had certain players playing and not. Um, but actually something that probably goes um, without being seen is that the players will often play with, I mean it's a word people use isn't it, a niggle. You know, players often throughout the season are managing injuries because they're not enough that's going to necessarily stop them. Okay, it might mean they're playing at 95%, but you know, to all intents and purposes, they don't need to rest. Um, so there's always that kind of management going on, and there's always that relationship with science and medicine and coaching staff and the player to sort of have those conversations. Um, but again, you know, any decision that gets made from, from the medical professional's point of view is my first and foremost. Um, you know, I want to ensure that I am looking after the player for their health and safety. As we've seen with a couple of things, there's life outside of cricket and people need to be safe and well enough to, you know, to, to do that. But equally, as in any medical profession, whether it's sport, whether it's, you know, not in the sporting environment, you give your players best evidence, best information and still actually at the end of the day, they, they could make a decision. Um, but yeah, my role is just to ensure that I'm up to date with everything that I need to know so that I can help and assist and guide them, give them the right information, share that with you know with player and, and then when coach is involved as well and we sort of sometimes we'll make a bit of a group agreed decision and sometimes it might sit more in one person's court than the other. Um, but yeah, those conversations go on a lot, certainly in the summer. And lastly, having experienced what can only really be described as an injury crisis, <laughs> what learnings can you take from that into next season i mean you talk about it not necessarily being about injury prevention but, but what what can you take into that to to make your I suppose, life easier next year yeah i think um one of the one of the things we've definitely sort of jumped on this winter and this november is recognizing the value in them having a good six to eight week block before christmas mm -hmm. which was effective last year they were in they could train a bit but it wasn't it was sort of self-led um, and not really with the guiding and the impetus just because of this, the situations that were going on with um, sort of that end of 2020. So we're really keen um, and we're making sure the environment is, is optimum for them to really feel engaged, to get stuck in, for them to always try and connect what they're doing now that it will have value for their cricket because sometimes they don't see why is that car phrase over there going to make any difference to me hitting it you know over the east midlands demolition or whatever um so i think it's just trying to continually encourage them that that's the case you know it's up to us as science and medicine to be uh, motivating them because um yeah it can get a, a bit monotonous at this stage and they just want to get back to cricket um, so that's certainly one thing we do. We always do, um, sort of, as I say, an injury review um, and try and pick apart um, anything that we can that will give us those hints um, of ways where we could just change something, tweak something, improve something. Um, and again, whether that's corporately as the whole group of cricketers or specific to a particular position or player or, um, yeah, absolutely. We had a lot to sort of you know, speak about and, and review as a department um, and, and we always do that and not just at the end of a season but sort of ongoing.